Hello everyone and welcome to the Lobster Roll Zero K weekly series, week eight. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are going to be getting started right away. Gonna get in with a match between FFC and wins a lot. We'll be on Fallendale, and as you can see, this tournament actually has been looks like the best attended tournament thus far. Thirteen players signed up. Of course, it is a weekly tournament, so it's all a matter of who ends up getting through that, but hey, I'm glad all these people have signed up, so let's see how the players play. Wins a lot going in for Anthbots. Adapt. Hello, game. Thank you. So, wins a lot should be going for Anthbots. Well, FFC, are they, are they connected yet? Oh dear. Ah, there they are, okay. That happens sometimes. Yeah, we man we didn't quite get in for the map banning process, though I will point out that the rules have changed a little bit. It's like banned down to three and then pick one. But the old winner deny or winner pick denial thing is still in play. It's a bit I don't know. I mean it, it should it's hopefully gonna make a bit more sense anyway. Might be easier to sort out how things are meant to work. Stuff is a little complicated, but it doesn't seem like last week where it's going to be outright confusing. The heck? Alright. FFC on the cloaky side. So Cloak versus Ampot on Fallendale is not a match we've actually gotten to see a whole lot, though it does feel fairly even. I mean, this map is kind of hilly. Anthbot has been a favorite on this map, I think largely because of the river. Provides them a little bit of regen in the center of the map. Overall, though, this map, I haven't really seen a whole lot of evidence that it's particularly favorable to any bot factory. It does feel like vehicles just work a little bit better. But Anthbot has remained very popular, so we are seeing... Or bots in general have remained very popular on it. And we are seeing that. FFC going for light scouting. Nothing too involved. Wins a lot. Looks to be playing primarily on defense. Possibly going for three ducks before an assault. But they are not able to get that. Just because... I don't know. Yuri's just got tied up in the commander. And indeed, that's exactly what's happening. The ducks going over to the north side. Although, that looks more... Yeah, they see, they see the glaive. Going to stop that. And beyond that, it's... Well, at this point, Winslot is playing defense. They have ceded a lot of the territory. Looks like they're about to push out to get to it, but they still have given FFC a lot of room to breathe. And FFC has taken full advantage of that. Winslot also interesting sending their commander down. Normally, most people would send it north. I'm honestly... Agreeing with Winslot's assessment here. I think that sending our commander south is a much safer choice. Just, historically, the major attacks have always come from the south. You're on the eastern side of the map. Though by symmetry, that means that FFC has put themselves in a bit of a risky position. And that's exactly the case. As the ducks are going to the northwest. And that will... Well, that will slow things down a little bit. As far as expansion goes. Possibly allowing this conjure to be taken out. It's... Nah, it should cloak before the ducks get it. But that is still a scary situation. The ducks can still find that conjurer. Because that is... It's cloaked. It's not... Oh, it does get away. Just barely. Let me be fair, as Decloak Rays has received a bit of a buff recently, which helps. But still, that was close. Regardless, that Northwest expansion... I mean, it's not being built on. So Winslot's able to get quite a bit of momentum just setting up their Southwest expansion quickly, though admittedly on the other side they have not built up, a duck having already been situated there. So it's even with that, FFC, they've managed to maintain enough map control that the game isn't really going to an advantage in either direction. Hmm, ooh, okay, we have an imp coming in here for FFC. Winslot looks... Looks like probably be fine with that, I mean, they'd They've been spreading the ducks out reasonably okay. I mean, it is still a risky thing to throw out there, but... In versus ducks, I could see it. 
And they're going for it now. Oh, there's the imp already in place. Ducks don't want to go in for an attack yet, though. I mean, there's not reason to. They, they are more just dealing with raiding, just slowing down FFC's construction. They don't really want to go in and kill FFC's base yet. They they can't. Winslot's well aware those ducks will not be able to take the base on their own. That's not the point, of course. The point is to keep FFC from being able to expand. Winning outright yet is just not in the cards. That being said, they also want to make sure that they don't lose anything, but enough ducks are on defense that it should not be a problem. I mentioned this one duck over here being a real thorn in FFC's side. Goodbye, solar collectors. She more so. Ooh, never mind. Good placement on Lotus. Perfect timing, too. But still, that duck. That was a hero duck. No matter what. Died in the end, but it did a lot of damage in the meantime. That actually gave wins a lot. Well, it's getting the advantage when it came to metal. FFC having to rebuild while. Wins a lot. Oh, did I? I'm silly. Wins a lot already. Just, they were staking out the territory here. I'm not think. Sorry. Earlier commentary about the duck being there is actually in favor of wins a lot. My bad. But yeah, wins a lot slowly but surely expanding while harassing. Safe approach. It's working out too because FFC has not been able to put a stop to it really. That being said, FFC looking to respond in kind over the north side of the map. The south side of the map, FFC is forced back, but. The north side of the map is the real threat. Actually, through the center as well. Enough ducks are in play that it won't be too easy to get around, but... At the same time, that is a distraction. Center glaze being a distraction for the northern glaze. The northern glaze is able to get in. Should be able to kill that conch. No problem. Does not close up in time. Does not get that defense bonus. As a conch and three metal extractors... And two ducks for basically free. All right, for all that Winslot had managed to pull off with advantages earlier on, they are in a tight spot. And also, I think the... I don't know if see it. Did they see it? They did. They know exactly what Winslot's up to. Winslot is not focused on building anything heavy. They are focused on massing ducks. FFC, on the other hand, is not focused on building anything. They're actually kind of accessing quite heavily, in fact. So while they know what Winslot's up to, there's nothing they could really do to respond. So yeah, they know Winslot's going for mass duck. And the imps aren't a bad response to that. But I don't think they realize that they don't have the resource production. They don't have the resource production. Or they don't have the unit production capacity to actually deal with that. Although beautifully done with that. One imp. Oh! Oh, that is painful. So many. All the ducks. All the ducks go down to the imp. Of course, that being said, that they were immediately rebuilt. Along with some archers, too, because why not? Now, that that's the problem here, is that FFC... FFC needs those imps in order to be able to actually make up for lost production capacity. Wins a lot can just rebuild all that. Instantly. I mean, th that's the thing. They are... They're doing fine when it comes to rebuilding stuff. They got 36 metal a second. They've got all the energy in the world they need to reclaim. They are, or rather, they need to use Reclaim. It's not a problem. I'm a little surprised we... I guess it's, I'm going to say a little surprised we aren't seeing anything more, but... Yeah, Scallops wouldn't really make sense here for speed. Wins lot FFC, the commander's going at it. FFC, they are looking a little weaker there. Both of them need support commander, though. But yeah, that, that Lotus is putting FFC on the back foot. Winslot able to retreat into their own Lotus. Not a whole lot's going to be able to respond to that. Same time, Archer's going over the north of that fight. One more imp has managed to get in there, but Winslot's clearly much more aware that those can happen. And yet again, another, another 17 or so units. Another 18 units just ready to go and attack. Again, that's the thing. FSC has just fallen very far behind in terms of production. They do finally have some... Some, like 20 metal per second worth of build power going in there. But yeah, unfortunately, this is what happens when you don't actually put the build power. This is what happens when you're accessing metal. And I realize energy was tight, but... Build power is also not enough to spend the metal worth the energy to come back up. 
I mean, another care a caretaker or two. This is... Ah, it's a bit of a thing. That being said, the FFC has actually still managed to hold out reasonably well. Winslot is starting to throw away their forces, and the more they do that, the more they feed Reclaim to FFC. Now, FFC doesn't have a lot of capacity to take advantage of it right now, but, you know, they just throw in a couple of worker or build units. Again, build a caretaker. That would do a lot to getting all of this Reclaim to their name, and all they, just need, all they need beyond that is power production. At the same time, Glaive is able to find plenty of value across the map. There simply isn't anything Zag defense-wise to deal with them. And I don't see anything that Winslot really has as a major push. I mean, there's this north side push, which that will deal a fair bit of damage. But FFC is just, they're getting, they're getting stronger forces. They're getting Ronin Glaive mix. They're getting, getting anything else? They're getting knights yet. But they are still harassing everywhere, forcing Winslot to rebuild, forcing Winslot to continue to spread, split the forces around. Like Winslot, I don't even think has the larger army anymore, honestly. At least by cost. You see here, wins a lot. Army value is what the? Oh right, wins lots. Army value thirty-eight. Oh never mind. They still got plenty. Even having dropped, wins lot is still way ahead. FFC is winning on attrition, but again, just that lack of build power. Finally, characters coming up here. FFC is able to start getting something going, provided they build some power plants. But that seems to be a pretty big provided. I don't see any signs of power plants going up. I don't see any signs of pillars being queued for stuff. Other than more metal extractors. So FFC, while they do have production capacity coming up, it's not huge. That being said, wins a lot. They are losing a lot of forces. And yeah, their army size has been bigger, but that's only going to be for as long as it takes for FFC to realize they need more power plants. And it looks like FFC has realized they need more power plants. So, yeah, FFC can easily turn this around. This is... Winslot's advantage has ceased. They have they are no longer able to take advantage of their increased production capacity. No longer able to take advantage of the economy advantage they'd had. And we should be seeing army value change advantages pretty quickly. Unless Winslot either gets way more metal extractors off of these assaults, or gets a little bit more careful with their forces. Also, it kind of depends on whether or not FFC switches off of Mask Glaive, because Mask Glaive is having a bit of trouble with the ducks. I mean, that's pretty obvious right now. The, the ducks are just... They have some splash damage. They have, obviously, they're homing. Not a whole lot Glaives can do to deal with them. Ultimately, I'm not sure how this is going to work, just because, again, even though FFC's now gotten their production kind of on track, wins a lot, has also gotten themselves into another advantageous position production-wise, and more metal. Yeah, that's... That is going to be very difficult to deal with. Wins a lot, continuing to just go even more mass ducks. I mean, the imps were a good idea, though. I'm not gonna lie, that was, that was really clever. But we aren't seeing any more of that. Especially, like, Conjurer, Area Cloak, Imp. That's not something that we're seeing, which I would expect that we did, that the game would be going quite differently, but even then, Winslot's still struggling to really push in. I mean, Fight Move Ronin turning out to be an extremely strong tool in this fight. We are seeing boys come in as a backup force, or stronger assault force. That does make sense to me. I mean, with duck support, it's not like Glaive's going to be able to surround them or anything, so not a bad choice. Should be able to contest the Ronin reasonably well, especially in those numbers. I mean, just slowing them down, that's a lot. Though again, FFC still running into power production problems, where Winslot has none. So looking at the Army Valley once again, Winslot maintains a Medal advantage, a two-fold medal advantage over FFC. And that doesn't look to change anytime soon. But middle FFC's commander providing a good argument that maybe knights would be a good choice. 
Doesn't appear to be happening anytime soon, but it's an argument. It's a good one. I don't see it happening anytime because it's pretty clear that Mass Ronin is what their strategy is right now, and I think it may have run its course. Though we'll see. I mean, the boys are boys are here doing some damage, having a bit of a tough time, especially with the slow bomb. Bulkhead not even able to get in position before getting killed himself, so Winslot actually is proven to have a bit of a challenge getting up here. Swapping into the tank factory, presumably for Coda, I would think. Just to sweep through and get rid of all of these Ronin, though admittedly ogres would do the trick too. For how clumped up the Ronin are. Overall though, FFC, I think they're managing to turn this around. Indeed they are! Wins a lot, despite having the massive increase in production capacity, they are getting pretty well torn to pieces on attrition to the point that they are managing to get their army value, or rather, FSC has managed to get their army value on par with Winslot's. Though, it doesn't appear to last. Ultimately, Winslot does just have more room for error. They've got more metal extractors, they've got more... Well, they don't, not even more reclaim, just more power, honestly. Which... They can reclaim when they need to. They can produce everything they need to. They have six factories along with like two or three constructors worth of extra build power. On top of two extra caretakers worth of extra build power. So Winslot can really afford to throw their units away. Not to mention the commander being up front can just reclaim all this stuff. And it looks like to some degree they are. Okay, that is scallops coming in here. Not sure I agree with that choice. I guess the Ronin. I mean, I guess the Glaives, yeah. I guess the Ronin. It works fine. The Ronin getting caught against themselves along with the boys slow, unable to get out of the way of the scallops in time. That should be. That should be basically it. If you look at the territory control, wins a lot. It's got way more than FFC. The only downside right now being that wins a lot's strug struggling to get rid of the Ronin ball. And the Gauss turrets. Doing something. You have Conscious and Commander coming in for repair and reclaim as well, so at the very least there's you know additional resources, additional room for error, and also making sure FSC does not reclaim the reclaim field of Winzalot's graveyard. Throwing their units to their death in the meat grinder. But hey, at least that meat grinder is being used to produce sausages for Winzalot's side. Out of their fallen well, okay, reclaim is a weird system. <laughs> when you really really think about it, reclaim is kind of weird, but yes. Winslot recycles. They're conscientious. They're efficient. I mean, okay, they're losing their units left, right, and center, but they're at least, you know, making sure not to lose the metal of those units. With that, though, Winslot, they're able to just press that advantage. It doesn't matter. Like, FFC simply hasn't been getting the units they need to deal with this efficiently. I mean, even the Ronin has health, but it's just not enough. Honestly, I don't know why they haven't gone for Knights. They are really sleeping on knights. Knights are maybe not busted, but really strong. And in this situation, you know, having that assault force tanking everything as they lightning gun everything along the way would do wonders. But Winslot's basically turned all that reclaim field of their own units into more of their own units. 70 metal per second over 33. And that should basically seal the deal. Desperate Stinger will not be up in time, though admittedly, that does allow the Ronin to kill the Ogre, but again, that's not saying much. Ultimately, Winslot, they have the advantage here, although, to be fair, it is pushing for more and more, more forward. There's a lot of Conjurers near the Reclaim Field, far more than Winslot's commander is, so I could see Winslot actually losing a lot of this Reclaim to the Conjurers FFC's just built. And indeed, that's exactly what's happening. Winslot... Going for one more push from the looks of it. I mean, the commander is in position. Not really reclaiming a whole lot. Trying to resurrect instead? I do not agree with that. I really don't. I can kind of see where this is coming from, and maybe for the Gauss turret it makes sense, but I hope they're not trying to resurrect everything here, because that just takes way too long. Like, the reclaim is immediately useful. The resurrection, that's build power that could be going to building more units, which is going to be a problem now that FFC has been reclaiming. But if it's just the Gauss turret, it will be okay. I think that makes sense. Well, the middle would be like... How many... 
what do they have for... Okay, they have 14 metal per second build power. No, 29! Oh, yeah, no, that would take 10 seconds to rebuild. It'd be faster to reclaim and rebuild, honestly. Yeah, I really don't understand the logic for the resurrection here. It just, it's gonna take longer. That being said, with the Aspis coming in, that will stop the Ronin from really having free reign over the army, allowing them to push. And that might be game? At the very least, Winslot able to uh, win a few extra feet worth of territory. Man, this is... Wow, I mean, if you ever want to see World War One simulated in 0k, here it is. Just meat grinder for every single centimeter of space. It is not pretty. But bulkheads are in. They are at least managing to hold the line well enough while the boys are able to deal some damage. Slings remain in play. And actually, quite a few Reavers have come up as well. So the Ducks can't really assault the Ronin anymore. Not sure the same can be said for the Minotaur, though. That's, that's still looking scary. But again, that's a lot of Ronin. And with that many Ronin, that, that Minotaur is not going to last one more volley. But even then, it's still uh, wins a lot. Maintaining an economic advantage, but it's it's tough. It'll be tough to hold on to. Again, as this grinds closer and closer to FFC's base, it becomes easier and easier for them to take that reclaim instead. But the Ronin... Uh, it looks like they're making the last stand right now. Phantoms are being built up, though. I, I suppose against Winslot's commander, that's the only thing I can think of that actually has... That is enough of a target of interest to take out. Though, granted, without the commander, that would be a major blow. But Phantoms deal, what, 1,100 per shot? Oh, 1,500, my bad. What am I thinking of? Anyway, 1,500 per shot, so three shots would get rid of the commander. On the other hand, Cyclops, because Cyclops. When you need to push through a massively entrenched position, Cyclops. They just have 12,000 HP. That, again, looks to be another reclaim field hard one on the part of wins a lot. Same time, though, FFC looking to build up over the north, possibly reclaim a bit with their commander. But the main base, that is the real point of concern. That main base goes down, which it very well may. I mean, there's... These Ronin are going to be easily flanked by all the units coming in now. And... Wait, is... Is Winslow just going? Yeah, they are. They're going to harass the south side. Don't even want to take out the main base quite yet. Just take out all the resources that have been built up along the side. Which is a safe option, honestly. I think it's... I don't know that they could push in. I kind of think they could by now. But so far, it's not been working out. So I totally understand the logic. I'll just get rid of the metal extractors. If FFC doesn't have metal, then FFC can't build up. But then FFC's metal is primarily coming from this reclaim field now. And have conjurers all around. 20 metal per second thus far coming out of that reclaim field. And the bulkheads are helping. They are thinning things out a little bit. But it's tough against the Ronin. On the other hand, though, the Ronin being pulled out of position into a position that can be very easily swarmed and targeted down. I don't know if I agree with the Cyclops being all the way down south, though. Again, I understand why it's doing that, but it's kind of needed up north to hold that reclaim field, which it's not. The FFC losing Ronin after Ronin, providing themselves a much harder task to actually take this reclaim field and hold it. Though, granted, with all the Conjurers here, that's that might still be okay. Yeah, okay, they could very easily reclaim everything here and get an advantage on Winslot econ-wise. They do have the build power to take advantage of it too. But look at the army value once again—it's ten thousand to two thousand. Much of which over to the north to get rid of FFC's commander. Or, well, scare them away, really. FFC's commander is nowhere near dead. And now, if they contain Gauss. Oh, I suppose that's an option. Again, not sure I totally agree. And FFC is going to have a massive economic advantage pretty soon. But I do kind of understand. This is a grindy game. Just don't let them get out. So, it's, it's a good plan. It does make sense. Uh, we're not, the Cyclops has come back. They may no longer be necessary. The Cyclops will be able to take out massive chunks of this army. Wins a lot on the repair. 
Ah. Gotta be careful, though. Don't lose your own commander in the process. That commander is pretty much the only thing holding this assault. Where's the remaining forces? Okay, another wave of units will be coming in fairly soon. Unfortunately, this wave has been pretty much exhausted the entire... Pretty much the entire army over to the north side of the map trying to swarm in that way. And again, I understand the need to contain, but I don't think that's going to work. It looks like there just isn't enough firepower over to the center to keep that contained. I mean, we have all these slings. The Ronin are starting to pick up numbers again. Wind's not able to repair that Cyclops, though, so at the very least there is that firepower being brought back in. And the north side has broken. I've managed to get through the defenses. But again, this was a bit of a risky play on the part of Winslot, because yes, it is on paper safe, but FFC could theoretically break out and start dealing some damage, get a bunch of reclaim. Like, now, if Winslot's trying to maintain a contain on FFC's forces, I understand why the north side, but I don't understand why so many forces to the north side. I think the rally points are over on the north side entirely. Oh, no, they've been changed. They've been changed. Back to the center. As the north side has fully fallen. Again, it did pay off. The wins lot strategy did work out. FFC is going to be losing basically everything. Including the match if they're not able to turn this around, which I am I'd be surprised that they can. It's a 13,000 to 3,500 metal army value difference. FFC's commander now slowed under attack from all sides. Armies under attack from all sides, pretty much the only thing left to defend are just conjurers and gremlins. Gremlins are only really useful against the drones, which admittedly is not nothing, but it's not going to save FFC's commander. As that goes down. And with that, not a whole lot remains in terms of firepower. But a lot remains in terms of a nice reclaim field. Again, though, Winslot's commander unable to do much with their drones. I think it's because they aren't moving in, though. They have other weapons. Particle beam. They have... Actually, the drones can be fine as soon as the gremlins are done. Not to mention they wanted to go for... I don't think they'd go for an air switch, but if they did, well, they can already spot all the gremlins because they're just going to go for the drones. And there's the conjurers going down. One after another. They cannot hold that reclaim field. The con oh, that Cyclops! It's going too far in! It's going way too far in! That's death! Oh, that's a shame. That's a lot of reclaim to go over. It's almost a thousand metal worth of reclaim that FFC just got for free. Follow-up forces are in. But again, Winslaw just isn't managing to pull out the win. I... I wouldn't... I suppose I shouldn't be expecting, like, Grizzly or something, which is normally how you end off with Anthbots. But that wouldn't be a terrible idea. Like, something just to have a kind of... A nice, strong body just to really tank damage while the rest of the units deal all this damage. There's, the critical mass of Ronin has been broken. Uh, unfortunately, the Glaive is coming in here to get rid of the bulkheads. Emissary is forced to retreat, but there's nothing to retreat to. Scalps have all gone south to try to finish off our last little metal extractor. I don't agree with this. Winslot's commander under heavy fire. It's going to go down. There's nothing that can be done about it. The Scallops are going the opposite direction. Why, Winslot, are you not saving your commander? Ugh. Oh. If FFC wins this game, that'll be why. They might have just turned it around, having gotten rid of Winslot's commander, who was doing most of the work of really shoring up this assault. Especially in between waves of units. It might be too little too late, but that was still a strong move on FFC's part. But unfortunately, Winslot just doesn't seem to know how to turn this game into a win. It's mostly just a matter of their positioning. They have a lot of units that are... Like, exist... that are... around... That'd be theoretically useful for dealing with different modes of counterattack that FFC would use to try to break out, but they aren't all together. Like, that's the problem, is that Winslot has these single, or maybe like two-point combined arms forces, but not ones that can deal with any force that comes at them. That's where the problem is lying. They're leaving heavy units on their own for the Ronin to kill. They're leaving lighter units, like artillery, on their own for Glaives to kill, and FFC is able to take advantage of all of that. And Winslot, they still have the economic advantage. They're still able to turn this, or, or still able to push this, but it's not clean. And FFC keeps having points where they could theoretically turn back. It's just, again, that 
economic advantage and army advantage is becoming quite the challenge to push through. And I will point out there is actually a 45 minute time limit for the games in the tournament. It's never come up, but we're at minute 28, so I figure I should point it out just to make that clear before we get closer, because that might be relevant. Especially if FFC starts to turn this around, which it looks like they might be. These glaives, these hero glaives over to the north, ripping apart all the metal extractors that Winslot has. I will admit, Winslot's, Winslot's economy is part, largely driven by overdrive now, but that does require metal extractors to actually have. That being said, Winslot is able to push in the center. There's not a whole lot defending it. No glaives around to take care of the bulkheads or the boys. And now they've reached the factory. This still looks like it'll be it. FFC... Valiant effort coming around with the Glaze, but they aren't quite able to deal enough damage to stop the boys coming around the side. And that is it. FFC throws in the towel. 29 minutes into the grindiest game this tournament has seen on stream. But man, that was one defense. That was a heck of a defense from, from FFC there. I mean, in every way, Winslow was outspending them, and FFC just continuously maintain a massive attrition advantage. That was remarkable. Well, like half the metal used, too. Or two-thirds of the metal used. I mean, the excess in the early game, that was what really put them into a bad position, though. If that early game excess didn't happen, FSC probably would have taken the game, just for having been able to use their units more effectively. But unfortunately, that early game excess, the lack of energy income, that killed them. That that's what lost them the game. Everything else was just them desperately trying to claw back into the game following that. And they almost managed, too. Like, Winslow was really throwing away their forces. But unfortunately, it's just... That's what happens when you have a massive economic disadvantage, is that if you're not able to perfectly defend along all sides and push back, then one of those sides will get you. And that's what Winslow managed to do with these three boys. So, that was that, I think. Wow, okay, we're done most of this. <laughs> so, in the time it took me to do this, we got most of the winners' quarterfinals done. And I think I might just jump to the winners' semis, honestly. I'm... I'm gonna take a short break and then come back with... Uh, where's winners... I'm kind of curious, Is has... The Golda game started yet? The Randy Dinothorn game, rather? Has it started yet? Please tell me it hasn't. Ah, oh, it has! Sheesh! Okay, well, that's... Okay, we're gonna break tradition and go straight from... Round 16 to 7 without a break. So, let's go! Because that, that's a thing, which, yep, we're going to get to. Because, yeah, normally, normally what will happen is that we have the opening be, you know, just winter's quarters and then it goes from there. But, nope, today it's going to be, going to be starting with winter semis. Or, sorry, winter round of 16 and then winter semis. No winter's quarters. Unless we bounce back and this will be a winner's bracket video. Anyhow, Randy... Randy on Rovers, Dimefreund on Cloaky. And a very quick Dimefreund taking both si both corners of the map. Masters are coming here to get rid of the Knights, though. Solid choice, I'm not sure the DPS is high enough. Randy's still a bit of defend along the south side, but look at Dimefreund mostly naked expanding. So there's a lot of room for Randy to come through here after a bit of an early disadvantage. Push back into the remainder of the corners, and that should work. Knights gone for the knights are appearing to be under construction. But Randy looks to be taking the northeast side. And the northeast corner is... Ooh, southwest corner potentially too, actually. Randy's commander going over that way with a few scorchers. Randy, what you got up your sleeve now? I should have died for what you got to sleep now. Randy's trying to get an advantage. Knights, Glaives. Okay. Solid choice in the Glaives. Getting rid of all the fencers. And from there, we should probably be seeing Rippers, maybe Ripper Fencer. I'm seeing Di Randy is liking them fencers. But Ripper might be 
I'd, I'd say Ripper is probably the best choice as far as support units. Match a speed reasonably well. Depends against Glaives. Though, admittedly, so do Scorchers. At the same time, their time frame with the Scythe. Very a nice sneaky play coming here. Getting over a couple metal extractors. Maintaining their economic advantage. Same time, though, Randy, not to leave that alone. Going with the Scorchers. Almost taking out a Knight. So close. Losing three Scorchers in the process, though. And the rebuild attempt getting stuffed. Good reaction on Randy's part, though. Saved that Mason before it ran into actual death. And the scythe goes down. Randy maintaining their base reasonably securely. Actually managing to get their economy relatively on track, too. So despite the early setback, Randy has managed to take the southeast corner or south yeah, southwest corner. Managed to hold on hold on to their base over the north side. Or the north edge of the north edge of their base. And get some scorchers into Dynefroin's main. All the power going down. Unfortunately, that power goes down by right as Lotus die or Lotus is born, so. Not quite able to destroy it, but hey, Dynefroin, at least now at this point, they can't use all that metal. So, solid choice in Randy's part to take out the energy. Dynefroin is playing it very close with energy, as to be fair, as is per Randy on the low end, though. I should know Randy's being very, very, like, very open with building more and more power at Palace, and that's working out. Again, more wind gens going down for Dynefroin. Scorch is able to escape too on top of that. That is that is a strong raid. Dynefroin, though, they do have a reasonably scary army coming down to Randy's base. But it's not looking too hot. Scorch is able to get rid of one of the knights. One more knight remains. The Scorchers are the defense force for the fencers. And Dynefroin can't easily rebuild. They just don't have the power. I mean, when when to start to pick up? What I was about to say about Randy is that their wind gens, they have so many wind gens that they're fine when the wind goes down. Dynefroin, on the other hand, it was only working when the wind was fully picked up. And they lost a bunch of their wind gens. Randy turned that into what looks to be an army advantage and in Indeed, it is. Just barely now. I should say it's not just barely, but just just now. Not barely. It's a two-fold lead on metal, but... The advantage coming in thanks to that nice little raid with the Scorcher. Brilliantly played there by time, by Randy. Dimefreund looking a little bit troubled as to how to actually come back from this. I mean... I don't disagree with the use of knights, but again, the, the reavers are here. I, I'm sorry, there's the re, the fencers are here. Reavers wouldn't be a good choice. I mean, they're not bad against scorchers, but again, it's just it wouldn't be the best option overall. And I'm just surprised we're not seeing like actually reavers wouldn't be bad idea. Come to think of it, you'd have to cloak them, but you know, just use area cloak on one of the conjurers and then send reavers in that way. But of course, that's a bit of a risky strategy. It might work, but Randy has such an advantage in an army that it's gonna be hard to go with that. And Dynefroin throwing in the towel immediately. That was that was a pretty short winter semi, so we actually are gonna go back to Winter's Corridors. This is gonna be a winner's bracket game, or winner's bracket. As we're all over the place now. Actually, I might split this in half. So. Yeah, we'll call this... I guess Winner's Bracket Part 1 and Winner's Bracket Part 2. Oh, yeah, sorry. Asking about Randy's Commander. I believe they did not. Randy's Commander is right here. Alive and well. So, no, Dinter Noodle. Randy's Commander is absolutely fine. They did not lose their Commander this game. So yeah, with that, we are going to be moving on to one of the winner's quarterfinals, because that is what's next. But we'll be taking a short break as we switch over, so stay tuned, because it'll make it easier for me on the YouTube edit. <laughs> 